Hello, welcome back to another video. And this video is basically a continuation of uh, of uh, of, uh, of two uh, videos that I made on K nearest neighbors. Um, so if you haven't um, if you haven't if you don't know what K nearest neighbors is and how do we use it in the machine learning you can uh, take a look at those videos that I made and you get a basic uh, intuition of what those what these uh, what this model does and what is it used for what are its applications so one of the one of the applications of K nearest neighbors um, is recommendation uh, systems or engines and well recommendation systems uh, recommendation systems are not necessarily dependent upon K nearest neighbors and uh, so one of the biggest examples of recommendation engines are Google or, or uh, YouTube, which are actually uh, far more superior than what K nearest neighbor does. But but we can kind of use it to for for, for the recommendation purposes. Says. And this is one of the biggest applications that you can kind of think of when you're using or uh, when you're learning K nearest neighbors. So today, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be uh, using the knowledge uh, that we ha that we gained in our previous videos, and we'll be using. Uh, Python's powerful uh, libraries to to create um, a recommending system, recommending system um, based on a dataset that I have downloaded um, from this website, which is called the Movie Lens dataset. And this uh, this dataset is basically um, this as you can see has about one hundred thousand ratings from about six hundred users and nine thousand movies. Um, so. It's a pretty big data set, but as you can see, it's uh, it's not it's, it's not that big uh, as compared to this one right here, which has uh, about 27 million ratings. So um, you can kind of like uh, build uh, another example based on this data set after we have watched my video. So I'll be using this data set. Okay. So without any further ado, we're gonna be beginning. So if you have if you don't still, uh, I'll repeat if you don't know what K nearest neighbor is. You can either watch my video or just search uh, on Google what K nearest neighbor is and kind of like get get an intuition of what K nearest neighbor is. And once you have done, once you have already learned about that, you can actually come to my video and start watching it, and you will kind of get the idea of what I'm doing here. Because and I I will try to keep this as simple as possible. Okay, so let's begin. So first of all, what we need to do is we need to import pandas. Okay, so I'm going to say import pandas as pd, and then we also need um so. First of all, I will. Uh, first of all, I'm just gonna go ahead and use this pandas, and we'll keep this cell just for importing our libraries. So I've just used the pandas library here, and then what I will do is I will just name um, my data set as movies. So, so in un under the folder that I've downloaded from this website has uh, it comes with some CSV files, right? So it's uh, so a one CSV file that we have is this, the movies.csv, and the second CSV file that we have is the ratings.csv. So I'm just going to be I'm just going to be using these two files, okay? So that's why I just named them here, and I will be just importing them into my environment, okay? So now, what I will do is I will say df underscore movies. Df by the way stands for data frame, and I will be using the pandas data frame here. So I will I will use the function read cs3, and I will import uh, the f I will just use the movies folder name, and then what the columns that I want to use in this uh, in the csv file. Are just two so I just need uh, number one the movie ID and the second then second one is the title which is the name of the movie right and then I want to specify the data types so I'm just uh, specifying the data types explicitly so that uh, but but you can leave them unchanged if you're working with another example but I'm just doing it for my sake for, for the sake of this example only okay so I'm gonna put this uh, ID as integer 32 so I'll just say int 32 and the second one is the title so the title is going to be the string so I'm just going to go ahead and specify str in this place so with that being done that's all done let's try to like see if this, this data set was imported correctly so I'll just say that we have the movies dot head and as you can see that we have um, the movie ID and the titles and you can see all the movies listed down here and this is just uh, only the five first five movies but if you take a look at this in a great detail if you just try to like print out the total count of this so you can see it says that we have uh, more than 9000 movies uh, available and you can kind of get the idea that it it's a pretty big data set okay so with that being said we, we also need to now import that we need to get the ratings of the users so I will just get the ratings so df underscore ratings equals pd dot read csv 
and on the CSV we're gonna say we're gonna say readings and then the columns that we need to use here are going to be the user ID first of all we, 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 want, we want to know which user um, voted for which movie so for that we need the movie ID as well so and then the last thing that we need is the rating like what's the actual rating like what how much the user rated a movie right and then for the data types um, I'm just gonna specify each one of them to be um, so so the user ID and the movie ID if you take a look at the whole data here so if you take a look I'm just gonna go ahead and import the data first of all but the thing is that the user ID and the movie ID are supposed to be integers because they are unique numbers and they cannot be in float but the rating can be in float so that's why I need to spe explicitly specify that the data types are number one the data types are going to be for for the user ID the data type is going to be float I'm sorry integer 32 and then similarly um, for the movie ID the data type is going to be um, int32 as well and then the last one which is the rating I want to specify this as float32 okay oops okay so that being said let's take a look at the the rating the ratings and I will just print the, the first five uh, here and you can see that we now have uh, the data set perfectly created and we now have imported both of the files into our environment so we are good to go okay perfect so now moving on to the part where we need to um so what we need to do is actually a very simple process so if, uh, so if you know what how k nearest neighbors, k -nearest neighbors work is it actually um, compares um, two vectors and it tries to find out the distances between those vectors so the vector so it will just take one point which is basically a vector in a data set and it will, it will try to um, match it with other data points in the data set and find out the nearest point available in the data set with that particular chosen point so in order to convert this data set into uh, that kind of a data uh, into in a, into a data set that we can use for comparing distances we need to convert this uh, this data this whole data set into something called the sparse matrix so I'm just gonna call I'm just gonna put this here sparse matrix now the sparse matrix uh, what the sparse matrix does it's basically um, it's basically um, putting all the movies uh, and the users in, in a form of matrix in one, on one side uh, there will be a movies list of movies and on the other side um, we will be having um, users so if you, if you kind of like uh, draw this matrix let's say we have um, so I will just put some uh, ratings here four or five and then we can like uh, put more movies like th like more ratings here okay uh, this is just an example so don't, don't worry if you don't understand this right now so I'll just put this ratings here okay and then I'll just comment them out like this oh, oops <laughs> so we need to comment them out okay so what I'm trying to represent here is that let's suppose um, we have um, so we have some sort of uh, we can say that this right here are the movies and and right here we have the ratings okay and we have the users so we kind of what we are doing here is we have a user ID so let's say a user 1 rated uh, uh, the movie 1 as 4 and the, the user 1 rated movie 1 as uh, so we can kind of like differentiate each and every movie with each and every user and we can kind of create a sparse matrix based on this and then you will see why we are doing this okay so let's try to do this in Python let's try to do this uh, using the pandas pandas a spar uh, sparse matrix function uh, we will be using for sparse matrix we can use pandas so we will be using uh, a, a sparse matrix function from uh, scipy which is called the CR, uh, csr matrix which is basically used for creating this type of matrix so I will just import I will import that into my environment I will say scipy.sparse import uh, csr matrix okay and you can see it gives me the the suggestion so I will import the csr matrix and then what we need to do is we need to create first of all the pivot table so first of all I will say um, so we, we want to extract um, so I want to create a movie user um, kind of a table a matrix right so I will just put the movies on the one side and the users on the side so I'll just put that as movies users and then 
df underscore right and then we have the ratings right then we need to actually create a pivot table which will be receiving um, the so the index for this pivot table is going to be the movie ID because we want to put a uh, on the call on the on the row side we want to put movies so I will just put a movie ID as the index and on the column side on the column side I want to put the user ID right so that's what I'm doing here okay so it's very simple and for the values that the values that I need to fill in this matrix are going to be the ratings right simple and then so now we have a problem so right now if I just run this uh, and like so it's gonna take some time to actually run because we have a lot of data so if I just now like print this out you'll see a data set that has been created but what you notice here is is there are a lot of uh, no uh, null values so in many cases uh, there are users who haven't rated a movie and they have rated some movies and they haven't rated some movies so that is why we are getting this not a number or nan here instead of a instead of a number right and this is this is a problem we cannot process this type of data so that's why we will actually use um, a function in uh, in pandas so to fill all the the, the nan values are uh, with zeros so now if you run this you'll see that uh, all the values that had a not a number and now filled with zeros so now we're good to go with this data set this data set looks like that we can move on with with it right and then finally what we will do is we will convert all this into a matrix right so i don't know it's, it's, it's a data frame right so we will use uh, the scipy's uh, csr matrix function to actually convert this into a matrix so i'll say ma so i'll just kind of like make this a movies and users equals um, csr matrix and then we will put in uh, this right here. This is the data set, right? So I'm, I'm just, I'll just co copy this here and paste it. And I'll say the values. I want I want to extract all the values and put them in right here. So once that's done, you can kind of get the idea that now we have created our matrix and we're good to go. Now you might have uh, to have this question. So said why why did we pick rating? Like why is it just the rating? Why can't we pick uh, other attributes? Well, you can definitely pick other attributes, but uh, for the recommendation engine, there has to be a uh, there has to be a, a rating or, or there has to be an attribute that it has to use to match or find the distances. So we need we needed some notion of the data to get the idea of. Uh, let's, let's say we wanted to compare a movie based on its ratings. That's exactly what we're doing here. But yeah, you can kind of uh, take the more user information such as the age group or the demographics or the or the, you can kind of like segment this data based on the ages or maybe there are, mother, there are many other attributes of different users so you can take them as well but right now what we are doing is we are just trying to use we are just trying to build a collaborative uh, recommendation system which, which just uses uh, the, the information of other users to recommend something to us right so that's what we're doing so it's a very simple uh, example you can kind of like build something greater on top of this so with that being said, uh, we are good to go with our matrix. So now we can actually go ahead and build our model. So in order to build our model, we need to first of all import uh, uh, the, the nearest neighbor, uh, the nearest neighbor from scikit-learn. So I will just go ahead and say from scikit, scikit-learn. Oh, <laughs> sometimes I pronounce it so often that I forget that it's called sklearn in python and then from sklearn.neighbors we can import uh, we can kind of import this this function nearest neighbor okay neighbors okay perfect so now we have imported our um, our our function so we can actually use this to create our uh, model that is going to be that is going to be like uh, finding the distances between these vectors so we have our matrix we have our data we have created our matrix we, no, we now need to create a model okay so I'll just go ahead and say model underscore um, k nearest neighbors equals to the nearest neighbor function now we need to uh, specify the, the the matrix of these models and, and the things that we need to uh, pass in these models are there are numerous things that we need to pass in so if you know what can uh, so if you know the the the, the deep ins the inside pro the internal process of the nearest neighbors you will you, you know that 
we will be using some sort of a distance formula for calculating the, the distances between these vectors, right? So there are different uh, formulas available for uh, for specifying for, speci for for calculating the distance between two vectors. So we we have uh, something called Euclidean distance, which is the which is by the way the example that I use, um, which is by the way the example that I taught in my in one of my previous videos based on Kenyan's neighbors, and then we have something called um, the Manhattan distance. Then we also have um, we, we also have something called the Minkowski uh, Kowski distance. All these formulas basically calculate um, distances between um, between uh, two vectors, and they're also called the L1, L2 norms or L max norms, and they are basically used for calculating the distances between the vectors. And what we are doing here is we are just trying to calculate the similarity. So this, so there's another there's another thing called the cosine similarity. Similarity. Now, if you don't know what cosine similarity is, you can just Google this out, and you will get a formula. What it does, it just simply calculates the the magnitude the magnitudinal distance between two vectors. Uh, so we have a vector a. So let's say this is a vector a, and uh, so let's say we have a vector a and we have a vector v. So we can kind of calculate. Um, we can calculate the cosine similarity between vector a and b, and then we will get a something uh, something called the, the 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 percentage of similarity. So let's say we might get an answer that's like this. So this kind of this kind of gives us like that these two vectors are 95% similar. Um, obviously they're not, but I'm just giving you an example like how this is going to work. Okay. So this is exactly how it's going to work. Okay, perfect. So now I will actually go ahead and specify that we want to be we, that for this example we will be using cosine similarity. Okay. So now what I will do I will say metric. Okay. And in the metric I will specify that we will, we want to use the cosine similarity, and then the algorithm that we want to use is going to be the brute force uh, algorithm. So I'll just specify brute. So why do we use the brute force algorithm? Okay. So, uh, so, uh, how, so I'm, I just explained it how the cosine similarity works. It just takes the vector A and, and calculates it just the similarity between the vector A and vector B and it gives the output. Okay, But to actually um, calculate the distance between a one point with all the other points in the data set, we need to traverse through each and every single vector in the data set to calculate the distance between each and every one of them, right? So the brute force approach uh, is, uh, is simply a, a, a very simple approach of, of taking one data point and then comparing it with all the other data points in the data set. So this is exactly why we're using the brute force approach. But but uh, there are many other approaches available in, uh, in this uh, function right here. And you can, uh, you can use other approaches and kind of like tune your model to get m achieve the maximum accuracy or get better results. So what right, right now what I'm doing is I'm just using the brute force approach, okay? So with that being said, uh, now the next thing, the next attribute that we need to specify are the neighbors, okay? So the neighbors are the number of neighbors that we want to find out. So how many, uh, how many, uh, how many neighbors that we want to uh, specify? So let's say we got about. We, we, we have like 100 neighbors that are quite similar to it, but out of them, how do we, uh, how, how much do we need? Like how many recommendations do we actually need? So we can specify, so I, I will specify for the sake, uh, just for the sake of, um, for the example here, I will just say I want 20 neighbors, okay? And then with that being said, we have our model created, perfect. So we now have our model. And then what we can do is we can kind of fit, the, uh, fit all of this in, so we can kind of like uh, fit our data. So we, what, whatever we created here, we can actually fit this or train our model. So, so the fitting phase uh, or simply this function basically means that we are now about to train our model. Okay. So I will now pass in our uh, movie users here and I will now fit our model. So now our model is kind of trained and we can now actually uh, uh, ask questions to our model. But this right here is doesn't look very good, you know. We want to make a, we want to make a very practical system with, which which works in a very simple way. Okay, so for this, I'm, I I want to make a function that actually takes a movie name and gives us uh, what we call the recommendations of other movies that that might that might be very similar and that you might be interested in because based on the user ratings. Okay, so for that, I will be creating a function called the recommender function. 
and this function what it will be taking is a movie name okay and what it will be taking is a movie name and then we will be getting uh, the movies we will be getting a list of movies list of all movies recommended recommended to us okay so this is the function that we will be creating let's let's start building this okay so first of all let's say recommender and then in the recommender we, we need to pass the movie name of the, of course so I'm just gonna go ahead and specify the movie name and then we also need to pass in the data so that so the data right here is this this data right here this is the matrix that we need to that we need to pass in so that we can st we can uh, kind of compare our uh, movie with other movies available based on the rating and then we need to uh, f uh, we need to feed in our model into this function and the last thing that we need to specify are the number of uh, recommendations so I will say number of recommendations and how like how many recommendations do we need okay and now we will just go ahead and repeat all of this process right, that we have done here like this this function this thing right here so we will, you know what we will do is we will just try to fit our model so we, the, so what our model we have passed in, in this function we want to fit it uh, with the data that we have passed so this is the data right here so I will fit the data and then so now we have a problem okay so in the data set we have movie names but how do we compare the name in the data set and we have a problem so if I let's say if I specify a particular name um, and I want to match it exactly with the name available in the data set it's, it's going to be a problem because we might have problems like uh, the string matching problems that we that we might not be able to exactly match the name of the of the of the movie so for that uh, for that for reducing that problem I'm using something called the fuzzy the fuzzy sir the fuzzy matching okay the fuzzy matching uh, if you don't know what fuzzy matching is, I will, I will be making a very detailed video of fuzzy matching and what exactly it is. But for now, you can just kind of uh, uh, think of this uh, fuzzy matching as a very efficient way of matching two strings together. So the fuzzy, uh, pro for the fuzzy logic, what it does, it simply just matches two different sequences. So if the, if we have any spelling mistake on a, in a movie name, and if we forget to uh, capitalize the words, or if we forget to add spaces, it can still uh, kind of match the two movies and get uh, this, the, the, the percentage of matched results and then based on that it can select the index okay so that's what we are doing so, so the library that we are using for this uh, for this work is co it's called the fuzzy wuzzy um, you can also download this library by just typing pit install fuzzy wuzzy and, for the f uh, and then you will be using a function or a, or a property called the process okay don't worry if you don't understand this this is just for the example and you can kind of use your own approach of comparing the movie names in the data set just to make it an, uh, just to make it a little bit more efficient i'm using this fuzzy uh the fuzzy function okay so now we want to get the index of the movie name that we are fi that we are feeding into this function okay so that uh, so now we'll just go ahead and uh, put the index uh, equals the process that we have imported and then there's a function called extract one okay so I want to I want to extract one movie name out of, of, of out of all the data sets or out of the whole data set that I have, and then what I will get is uh, the movie selected. So I will just go ahead and say that the movie that we have selected, the movie that that the fuzzy logic has selected for us, and then what we need to say we want we want to feed here. Uh, so oh, oh okay so I forgot that we are not printing this out. We are we are feeding in the movie name right. So we we want to like first of all put the movie name here and then you want to feed in the data set okay so so the data set that we had here so the so we have the DF movies uh, which has the title right so you want to match the movie names in the title column in this data set right here okay in the zeta frame so in the movies uh, I want the title and then so once we get the idea once we get this we want we want uh, so let's let's try to like this just print this out first of, first of all I will just remove everything else from here and I will just try to get the result first of all I will just see what do we get okay so I will just put the IDX here and see what we get okay so I'll just put a recommender and then I'll put in let's say a movie name which is let's say I want to I, I, I want to find Toy Story so let's see what we get okay so it takes some time to actually um, so you can see 
um, what happens here, it's pretty awesome. So what would happen here is that I only fed in the Twice Story, and it matched uh, something called Twice Story 1995, which was the movie name in the data set, and it matched the sequence right here, irrespective of the fact that I did not uh, use the 1995, um, the year of the movie, and it still matched and gave me the... It doesn't only just give me the comp uh, the the amount of matched matched sequence that it got, which is 90% by the way, and uh, it also gave me the index of that particular movie in the data set. So this kind of uh, if this kind of resolves our problem of matching two string sequences, right? So this is actually quite helpful for us. Okay, so back to our actual uh, examples that we were we were making. So we want to know, so now we have the index of the movie, but we want to get this index right here. So this is a tuple, so we can get only this index, which is 0, 1, and 2. So we're going to specify the 2 here. And there we go. So we have the index. Perfect. Now I will say, I want to just print say and say that the movie selected, the movie that uh, this, this fuzzy engine selected was, let's say, now I can just go ahead and pick the movie, the name of the movie here. So I will say df underscore movies. And then we can just get, say that under, under titles, get the movie with the index that was just uh, that was just uh, extracted and then we can just also kind of like uh, print out the index as well so I will just say that the index that was selected uh, was whatever the index was so in our case uh, right here it was zero so it will just go ahead and give the movie name and the index okay perfect and then we want another function uh, I will just go ahead and just say that uh, we will just save that searching for recommendation okay and then we can just go ahead and kind of like put a loading sign here perfect then what we can do is we can uh, now we need to uh, specify now we want to use our model to find the distances between the vectors right and so for that our model will return two things number one the distances and then the indexes right so the indices right so Use use our model and the and the k neighbors numbers has a function called k neighbors. This k neighbor function basically goes ahead and finds out the neighbors in the data set. Um, so it it goes ahead and find out the neighbors, their distances with the with the current vector that I'm passing in, and the indices and the, and the indices that at which those uh, at which those data points are available in the data set. Okay, so I will just go ahead and just pass in my data, which is by the way just the just the matrix that right here. And I'll then I'll just specify the index because we only need to just uh, take uh, give one movie and we want to find the similar movies available for that data point, right? So we just for feeding one movie here, okay? With that particular index that was just extracted with the help of the the fuzzy uh, the fuzzy logic, okay? Okay, perfect. Now we want what we want. Uh, so right now what I will do is I will just go ahead and try to print the result of this uh, of our model and see what what we get, okay? And then I'll just call this function recommender, and I will just pass in a movie. Let's say a Toy Story, and I will just run this. Okay, so we have a fun uh, we have an error. It says that the DF movies. Uh, okay, so we have an index error. Oh, so we did not use the comma here. So I will run this now, and now it says that it requires. Oh, so we need to uh, pass in all the, all the all all the arguments here. So I will just go ahead and pass in my the data set. And my model that I created, so the model was Kinnear's neighbors model, and the total recommendations that I need are 20. Okay, so uh, we can also specify the number of recommendations here. So for that, I will just go ahead and say n. Okay, so we need. So here, the the model receives. Oops, sorry for that. <laughs> so the neighbors are going to be uh, equal to the n recommendations that I passed in as an argument, and then let's try to run this. Okay, let's see what we get. Okay, it's going to take some time. Now we have the oh, so the, we have the answer for that. So for the first thing that we had are, are the distances. Okay, so if we take a look at this, we have some uh, values, and this is exactly what a cosine similarity uh, returns. So remember what I told you about the cosine similarity. This is exactly the output we are getting. Okay, so we have the percentages of uh, of distances from one vector to another vector, and you can see one of uh, one of them has zero, which means that it is the it is the least similar, or at uh, or basically a completely similar, uh, completely similar vector uh, for the movie. Okay, and the index for 
each of those distance uh, for in the index for each of those data points are these right here so we can kind of like sort them and get the the most highest the, the most highest or the most similar on the top and the, the most dissimilar on the bottom so we can kind of do that so that's exactly what I'm going to do now and one more thing that we want to do is we want to actually get rid of of this uh, zero right here because this is what 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 this right here is doing it's it's actually getting it's just matching the the toy story with the toy story itself and so obviously since the toy story with, uh, with the toy story itself will return uh, this sim uh, similarity of uh, hundred percent so we, we don't want this we want all the other data points except for this one right so we, we will be doing that okay now, so now for that we will be just using a for loop I will say for I in indices so you want all the indices and in the indices I want to print all the movie names so I will say df underscore movies and I'll pass in a title here and the type with the title I want to pass in the index so for each index I what I want to do uh, I want to create a where function but I will be saying that if the index is if, if the index is not equal to the to the index that we want to be, that we passed right so we don't want to compare the toy story with the toy story itself we want to compare with all the other movies except for toy story right so now with that being done with, with that being said let's see what we get now okay so now we, we are expecting the movie names instead of the distances right let's see what we get okay so we now have uh, a perfect recommendation system um, so we have kind of like a basic recommendation system working for us it's not perfect obviously but we can kind of get the idea that based on the user ratings uh, we're getting the names of the movies that might be uh, quite similar to Toy Story but remember this th this doesn't mean that the movies are actually similar they're just uh, similar based on the ratings okay so what you can what you kind of get from this is that you can kind of uh, use a uh, your approaches to actually improve this recommendation engine and add more attributes like like age groups or or maybe the maybe the genres of the movies like whether the movie was action or or crime or sci-fi and based on those you can kind of like get the get uh, get better recommendations which are easier to, uh, and uh, and quite impressive so we can pass in any other movie here let's say I want to pass in Iron Man and if I just write run this let's see what we get for Iron Man okay so we kind of get uh, more movies like superhero thirst and we have a lot of movies right available so all this basically you can see that it automatically selected the Iron Man 2008 because of the fuzzy function that we used here and we got uh, our recommendations perfect so this is what this was a very basic idea of how we can use the K nearest neighbors to build a very basic recommender, recommender engine. I would encourage you to uh, to build this on a bigger data set with more attributes, or maybe even create a better interface for this, or maybe use this as uh, in a, in some sort of a web application to kind of like create a, your very own recommendation engine for for different users. And uh, there are multiple th things that you can try. And now I, I can say that the stage is yours and you can you have a lot of things that you can explore okay so with that being said um i, I would like to end this video now for here and all the links for the data set and the example that i've just performed here will be in the description down below and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel if you're new to this and do this to, to renovation academy and if you ha if you don't know if you want to learn more about machine learning and you don't know what what you want to do in machine learning and how you can get started with it I have a lot of uh, I have a lot of videos that you can get started with and you will get the basic intuition of what you can do um, essentially with the knowledge of machine learning and how you can apply and use machine learning um, in the applications like these okay okay so bye